Well, hey, Catholic Church, welcome to part eight. Hopefully you've watched all the seven videos. And this one is heavy on my heart, and I wish I had way more time, but I'm going to put the five-minute clock on the, on the countdown, and we're going to be talking about a huge, huge, huge topic. And here we go, so five minutes. We as Catalyst Church, it's just who we are, and we are to be disciplers, disciplers. So we are called to go, and you'll find out, just to make disciples. So before we can even understand how to make disciples, we need to help a uh, biblical definition of who a disciple is. And of course, Jesus does a great job in this by and saying this, if you abide in me, Jesus says, if my words uh, abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. And by, my, that, by this, my father will be glorified and that you may bear much fruit, prove to be my disciple. So if you just summarize this verse into um, the definition, as it says right down there, it's proved to be my disciple. In other words, here's the proof. Here's the definition. If you are a disciple of Jesus, not just somebody who have just come to know Jesus and say you're a disciple. A disciple is someone who, twofold, abides, which means remains, obey. That's the word that we're going to use. Obey God's word. All right, God's word. And believe me, it's tough to obey God's word, but we are called to obey God's word, which results in we will bear much fruit. So when we learn what the God's word says and we obey it, we will bear much fruit. It is fruit of the seed of God's word in our heart. And by doing that, ladies and gentlemen, you become a disciple, but it doesn't stop there. Discipleship is not selfish. It's receive it, bear fruit in your life, and then go make other people that are like you because you are following Christ from abiding, bearing much fruit, which results in you become a discipler, a discipler. We'll talk about that in just a second. So around here at Catalyst, it's just who we are. A disciple is someone who obeys Jesus and bears much fruit. Obeys Jesus and it bears much fruit. And the third one is what I'm going to be talking about. And goes, makes other disciples. Obey, bears fruit, makes other disciples. This is what it says in God's words. Go, therefore, that's an active lifestyle of going, and make disciples of where? We talk about missionaries of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, there it is, teaching them to observe, obey, abide in all the commandments I've given you and behold all with you to the end of the age. So here's a couple of practicalities. Number one is we are called to go make disciples, go make disciples. So if you are a disciple, you're obeying and bearing fruit, you need to go find someone or people that you're going to invest in. Maybe it can be a formal investment that says, hey, you, you, and you, let's do coffee. Let's study God's word. Let's teach you to obey. Oh, and by the way, you're not bearing fruit in this, not at a judgmental way, but hey, I love you, sister. I love you, brother. Let's work on this abiding, which resulting in fruiting of, of, of your life. So if you're a disciple, it's not just my job. It's Christ's followers job. It's not paid staff members. It's not the elders of the church only. It's you. It's me. If you're abiding in God's word, it says, go make what? It says, go make disciples. How do you do this? All It's like the duck principle. It's going to teach people the little ducklings behind you as you're following Jesus, the lead duck. As you're following Jesus, all you're doing is you're teaching the people behind you that are maybe for, for low, further behind of you in your faith and just say, hey, you guys, hey, Let's walk through this together. Let's help each other out and do it organically, do it organizationally, whatever it might be. But you are called to invest in other people, period. The end, the end. Okay, now also, we are also need to be poured into. We need to be discipled. So if you are somebody, no matter if you're events or not events in your journey of faith, our job is to say, hey, you, someone who is a little bit further advanced, discipled in our life, we need to go to them and say, hey, would you disciple me? You're following Jesus and you're a few steps ahead of me. You're a few ducklings ahead of me. Hey, can you disciple me? Take me underneath your wing. I think many times people who want to be discipled are waiting for other people to come to them. No, you also need to go to them as it goes both sides. Okay, but then it's the lifestyle. What do you do? 
as the lifestyle of it, if you have an idea and if you see somebody is struggling or if you see, hey, here's a great opportunity. I know I got nine seconds left. Here's the deal. Live a lifestyle of discipleship. Not only live it, but encourage people to live it. So if you have an idea, let's just say hospitality for some uh, for a reason. And if you notice that somebody who is a disciple is saying, hey, why don't you why don't you go invite them over to sit next to you? Hospitality. Or why don't you go wash their feet? Why don't you go to your neighbors and do this? Oh, by the way, you're struggling with this fruit. Let me let me help you with this. Take initiative. Take initiative. Own it. Be the disciple maker from being a disciple always. And by doing this, ladies and gentlemen, we will do what we are just called to do, to be a discipler, which means we're going to make disciples, we're going to be a disciple, and we're going to make disciples. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that encourages you. So go make disciples and be a disciple. God bless.